the evolution of internet and smartphones, when the pandemic hits in 2020, you know, something major happened to evangelism because through the pandemic, guess what? We were not able to be in person to go to church. We have to utilize digital. So in here, the pandemic closed all church, all in-person church activities and forced everyone to be digital. Is it's kickstarting our ways to do evangelism. The title of my sermon today will be Rethinking Evangelism. Uh, what is the meaning of the evangelism? Does anyone know? So if we look at the, uh, from the dictionary, evangelism means that it is the spreading of Christian gospel by public preaching or personal witness. You know, so we want to preach and share the gospel. Now, what is the gospel? You know, gospel, we can make it simple. That Jesus was born of a virgin, came to this world, died on the cross for our sin, resurrected, and sent to heaven, and will come back again. So that is the sin of the gospel. So in that says that, what do we do? Jesus asked us, the Lord is sent to heaven that... Uh, we are given the Great Commission. On Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, it says that, I have given you complete authority in heaven and the earth. Therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all commandments that I have given you. And be sure this, I am always be with you until the end of the age. So, this is the last request that Jesus asked us to do which is to share the gospel. That's one of the conditions. You see, uh, on Mark 16, verse 15, it says, He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. And then again, And this gospel, the kingdom of God, will be preached to the whole world. As testimony to all nations, then the end will come. Matthew 24, verse 14. So, there's a condition in there that it says that we need to share the gospel to all the world. Now, if we go into Hebrew 11, verse 13, in there, you see basically all the characters in the Bible. You know, all these people were living by faith, and when they died, they did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. They admitted that they were aliens and strangers to the earth. So from Adam, Abraham, Joseph, Moses, all the judges, David, Jeremiah, uh, they all died. To the reformers, you know, Martin Luther, John Calvin, Ellen G. White, everyone who passed away before us, they are still waiting for us to finish the job. They are waiting for that second coming where they can be resurrected. You see, we're like in a relay race. You know, all these characters have been passing around the baton and we are the last one to receive it and finish the race. So and we need to keep our faith to the end. But where does it stand right now? You know, as the late great Kobe Bryant said, I finish. We have works to do. Because, you know, only when the gospel is preached to all the world that Jesus can come back again. Now, let us take a look at the... Uh, where the current state of evangelism and Christianity at the moment. So this is the current state of the spread of the Christianity. Uh, let us watch the screen. Uh, that's the time when Jesus crucified and asked us to do the Great Commission. So this is from the apostolic age evangelism. He goes through. Yeah, by 16, he has spread throughout the, uh, the Western Europe. So uh, if you can see, the, the purple is actually how, how the Christianity and, the, and has spread throughout the, uh, the continent. Western Europe in the First Crusade as he goes on.
So from there, from the uh, first century, 15th centuries, you see how rapidly Christianity has spread throughout the world. By the 16th, 17th centuries, the North American colonists moved westwards, and he has spread throughout Asia and then back Africa's 20th centuries. You see that the majority has been covered. So, as you see, uh, the spread of the Christianity from that video, you see the first, you know, 500 years, uh, 1,000 years, it's slow, right? You see the, how it spread, it's slow, but it goes rapidly by the 16th and 17th centuries. Uh, the, uh, it's like going around the world. So, that's one thing that we want to take a look at, how, how the evolution, how it goes to that place. So, here, this is the time the... Uh, the apostolic age is evangelism. So, you know, one of the most famous evangelists, the one that we have, the apostles in the Bible, is Apostle Paul. As you see here, that, you know, he would travel, goes in person to travel and share the Gospels. Now, I don't know if you can see it clearly, but uh, he had about uh, ev many evangelistic trips throughout his time. And if you see the distance that he covered and how many days it takes, on his first evangelism, it took them about 53 days just to do complete it, all that, to go to the different places on the area right here, right there. On the second one, it took them 100 days because guess what? If you look at Acts uh, 13 verse 4, sent off on their new assignments by the Holy Spirit, Barnabas, Saul went to Seleucia and caught ship by Cyprus. So he had to travel by ship to deliver the word of God, you know, to share the gospels. It took them 53 days on his first trip. It took about 100 days, which is three months on his second trips. It took him about the same amount, 92 days, on his third evangelism. So there are times that it took for him to share the Gospels. Okay? Now, that's how it was back then. When he's not traveling, delivering the Gospel in person, guess what he does? He write. He write the letters. This is how he delivered his message, by writing it. And then, as it says, it's the same for those who's delivering it. It'll take them about at least a month to reach the place that he wants to. Because, you know, for 2 Corinthians 1 verse 16, For we write none other than things to you that what you read or acknowledge, I trust you shall acknowledge even to the end. And how do you think the Bible was made? It was, combined together. It was through these letters that Paul wrote. You know, but... As the same way as in person, it still takes time because they had to deliver them by ship or by, you know, by land. You know, it took time, at least a month to take. Now, we move on to the first century, up until the Reformation. How it's the same way, you know. Led by Luther, John Calvin, Knox, Huss, and Wycliffe, you see the same way. They still travel in person. You know, by ship, at the time, uh, airplane was not made yet. If you see, I have a little chart in there at the top left, the, you know, the route of uh, how they travel. They, it's only still by ship, the same way as what Paul did. But one of the break most, uh, the groundbreaking things was that the printing press was created. Johannes Gutenberg, the first printing press on this century, was created on uh, the Reformation. So it got a big boost because one of the things that how we share the Bible back then was you have to write it. You know, it's an in-hand uh, writing manuscript that you write the Bibles, you know, through hands, then you share it. But then through the uh, 17th centuries, uh, the printing press was created. So they were able to actually uh, to print. And one of the most interesting things is what is the first thing that it was print on the printing machine? Press that they made back then. It was the Bible. Yeah, it was called uh, the Gutenberg Bible. So, as you see, you know, it, it would take like a couple years. In here it says that he, for Martin Luther was saying the Protestant Reformation had a lot to do with printing press. Where Martin Luther thesis were reproduced about 250,000 times. And so had widespread dissemination of ideas that hasn't calculated in mainstream before. The greatest accomplishment 
was the first print of the Bible in line, which took three years to print about 200 copies. So it took three years to print 200 copies of the Bible. Okay? And, but, and that's considered miraculous because it would take months or years to copy that much Bible, amount of Bibles. You know? And even Martin Luther said that printing is the ultimate gift of God, one of the greatest ones. Because he knows through this avenue, through this tool, we were able to actually share the Bible through many people in a faster speed, more efficient way. You see, that's what it is. That's how it was, right? From Paul to Reformation evangelism. How about uh, seven Adventists? So in the 17th century, you know, when we were born, uh, Seventh-day Adventist movement was made, they actually really embraced the printing press. You know, one of the things that it was print was the present truth. That was the first thing that Ellen G. White published. You know, it was in 1849. And then, you know, they had the 1888 Ganora Conference you see in here. And then one of the ways that they do evangelism is to meet with others is also a camp meeting. You see, even camp meeting, the first camp meeting was in 1868, and it's still going on up until now. And they also sent a, a missionary. You see this after 1874, when J. N. Andrews was sent, was officially sent as a missionary outside the U.S. The result of that expansion, the Adventist Church is present in almost every country, as per December 31st. So you see all these things, the memberships, one of the first evangelism was J.N. Andrews. So, Seventh-day Adventists have works with the printing machines and also to be able to share the Gospels. Now, if you see in these Gospel workers, Ellen G. Watt says, in these days of travel, the opportunity for coming in contact with men and women of all classes and many nationality are much greater than the days of Israel. Through, through fears of travel, multiply a thousandfold. Look at this. God has wonderfully prepared the way the agency of printing press with its manifold security is at our command. So one of the things that Seventh-day Adventists uh, invest on early on was the printing press. So the it began to share the gospel, to print all these books that Ellen G. White had written and then share it to all over the world. So they had that. So the agency of printing press with its manifold presence, is at our command. The Bibles and publication in many languages, setting forth and truth this time, are at our hand and can be swiftly carried to every part of the world. So she understands the importance of printing machine and the understand uh, of evangelism throughout the whole world because, you know, it's the Great Commission. It is our mission. So Christians who are living in the great center of commerce and travel have special opportunities. And we go on here. She continues on. Literature distributed this on the train, on the street, on great ships that ply the sea through the mails. I instructed to point minister to unworked cities. So she knows the avenues that we used back then, not only in person preaching to others, but also through books and literatures. That's how we share the gospels back then. Okay, that's from the beginning through the, uh, the apostles to the reformations and then through even we share the gospels. Through literature, through books, not only that. Now, we move on to the next, the 20th century, the one when you see, remember the video you see earlier, how it spread out. How did it spread out like that? What is the invention of the 20th century that was created? TV, exactly. That is, that is one of the things that was created that spread the evangelism. Now, the most prominent uh, 20th century evangelist, we can always say, is Billy Graham. You know, Billy Graham, the word tele-evangelist was born because he used television to share the gospel. You know, not only that he does it in person, but he used the avenue of television to share the gospel to the whole world. You know, Billy Graham has preached 80, 80 million people to countless millions to, more over the airways and film. You know, at the time, he also brought Uh, people in stadium and 12,000 people outside. So almost 100,000 was, you know, was in the attendance. That's Billy Graham. That's how the 20th century's evangelism was in. They used so they were able to actually see and hear the news from where they are. 
you know. So that's one of the most things that are efficient. And then television is still on up until now, you know. But uh, if anybody, does anybody, what is the downside of television in the way? It's good, right? You can spread the gospel to everywhere. But this thing, what? Something on demand. You know, let's say Willie, Billy Graham schedule something, you have to wait at the time. You know, and then if you missed it back then, you wouldn't be able to rewatch it again. So that's one of the things that, you know, t television has greatly spread the Gospels. One of the tools that we use to spread the Gospels, but there's still a little downside. Now, let's go back to the ways of how the Gospel is being spread. You know, see back then, through, uh, you know, you walk, and then through printing press, uh, you know, telegraph, TVs, radios, you see like this is the start how the evolution of the gospel is being spread. And as Seventh-day Adventists, they actually embrace how the use of media. Because guess what? You know, we have our own television uh, airways, you know, channels. We have our own radio. Uh, we have television, you know, Hope Channel, uh, Three Angels Message, Three ABN. There's so many out there. Seventh-day Adventists have utilized media to share the gospels. Now, my question is, what is the 21st century ways of doing evangelism? You see, if you look at the chart before, uh, you see there's something in there that was created on the, on the late 19, uh, 1990s. It was the internet. So that's how, how it is. You see... How it was how people are consuming media back then through newspapers, and then now they're using their phones, the internet through the phones. You know, radios has been replaced with streaming service, music streaming service. Television has been replaced with uh, streaming, Netflix, Hulu, and then even shopping, retail shopping are being replaced by online shopping. Everything, a lot of things that we do in the 21st century are through online. Time that we live in, this is the future that how we go move move forward because the internet of things are not going away anytime soon. You see the use of internet, like you can see how it was back then. You know, when people go to concert, there was literally nothing in there. Now people are like recording things. You know, uh, and then you see how like it says and Risa said, nearly three quarters of the world will use just smartphone to access the internet by 2025, which is five years from now. Imagine, 75% of the world will have access to the internet through their smartphone in only five years from, I mean, I'm sorry, three years from now. Yeah. So, you know, you see how the informations are being passed. You know, you see the evolution from back then, how it is now. You know, like for, if you ask our kids, our youths, let's say you want to do something. If you're not sure how it is, you Google it. You know, you find out how it is. And if you're trying to actually learn new things, you, learn, you type it on YouTube. That's how you learn. You know, I learn a lot of things, uh, you know, how to work on my car, uh, doing photographies. It's from YouTube. It's not like we take specific class for it. So that's how it was. And as you see, even back then, you know, we use physical maps. Now we use our phones. Like one of the things that... One of, I say this, like one of the best buys that I had was, you know, having this GPS because I'm really bad with directions. At the time, it saved me so much because I had to read maps. You know, that's how it was back then, and that's how it is now, you know. And when you see the evolution of Internet and smartphones, when the pandemic hits in 2020, you know, something major happened to evangelism. Because through the pandemic, guess what? We were not able to be in person to go to church. We have to utilize digital. So in here, the pandemic closed all church, all in-person church activities and forced everyone to be digital. It's, it's kick-starting our ways to do evangelism. You see there, it says more Americans than more Americans than people in other advanced segments says COVID-19 has strained their religious faith. And it says that almost 82% of Christians prayed for the COVID-19 to end. So 
there is a need of uh, the gospel in the times of trouble. They, they're asking for comfort. And it kickstarts our evangelism through digital because, you know, that's when we start kicking in on our digital evangelism. See, in the 21st century, you see, the total population of the whole world is about 8 billion, right? And about 5.3 of the populations are unique of uh, mobile phone users. You know, people are using the internet. Only 62% of the population, 4.95 billion people are using it. 4.62 billion, this is in a B, billions, not millions, are using social media. And you see here, quarter to quarter, and these things is not going away. There, there's a growth of all these avenues on internet and social medias. You know, it's growing every 4%, and eventually, in maybe 20 years, maybe the whole world will use, you will have internet and have smartphones. Now, this is one of the things that, you know, we have. Look, social media platform, the most used is Facebook. The second one, YouTube. Third one, WhatsApp. Fourth, Instagram. So this is the most used platform that uh, everyone uses. And if you look at here, uh, there's, uh, it might be a little too small for you guys to see, I'm sorry, but like basically almost more than 80% of uh, emerging countries in America, in Europe, in Asia are using social media and internet. So what does that say to, to all the numbers that you just see earlier? You know, the potential that we can use and reach. You see, within one minute, one minute, 60 seconds, you know, there's 2 million views in Twitch, you know, uh, 1.4 million, that's right, one minute, just only one minute, you know. Uh, you see, uh, link it, there's connection, there's about 500 hours of content being uploaded within one minute. Uh, almost 700,000 stories shared on Instagram for uh, Facebook scrolling. So you see the avenues of the Internet on the 21st century. What does that say when it comes to evangelism? You know, you see all these numbers. How can we actually spread the gospel even more, knowing all these informations? Now, the... Uh, I want to ask, uh, who do you think is the most prominent Christian figures in the 21st century? You know, before the 20th was Billy Graham. He was one of the most famous ones. I mean, other than the Pope. The Pope has always been famous. He'll be on number one. But the, for the 21st century, who do you think it is? Hmm? Yeah. Joel Osteen. Yeah. So I actually just went on his website, you know, just to check it out. Google it. Who is the most... Uh, Christian figures in 21st century is Joel Osteen. He has the most one of the most followers. And if you look at this, he's so successful. Joel Osteen's, you know, number one. I went on his website. I look, look at that. It's like stay connected with us. There's a little bottom left right there that says Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. So he uses those avenues to share the gospels. And then what's funny was that uh, I, I, point, I screenshot the, the, uh, the video of the cell phone because, you know, before he started preaching, there's supposedly like, you know, saying the, there's a thing that they say to everyone repeat after him. And then this is my Bible. So they say like they don't bring physical Bible. Anymore. They use their phone. You know, that's, that's why it says right there, this is my Bible. So, you know, uh, the use of the physical Bible is getting less and less. How many of us here bring our physical Bible? Yeah, not many, right? I mean, yeah. Few still do, but there are many. So you see the trend. See, that is the trend that is going on in the 21st century. You know, less and less people are using the, you know, the physical. That's what they use, the smartphone. Now, see, with that, with this information, with these numbers, and one of the things, that's how our Fist Up Media Ministry wants to operate. You know? Uh, as you see back then, you know, 
we actually start live streaming not only just recently. I know it, it, it started, you know, growing more and more. But in 2013, you know, Om James actually started our live stream. But it was back then maybe just one or two people watching it, you know, and sometimes it's being shared, it's not. But so it's been from 2013, it's been almost like nine years when we started. That's why we have the foundations of what we do right now, you know. And next, on 2019, you know, Dede started making Feast.TV vi Feast, uh, videos, Bible facts and everything for us to be able to share the Gospels. We see the importance, we see the trend, we study the trend. That's how we implement all these things. On March 2020, during the pandemic, that's when we start Feast of Daily Worship. And that has been going on night after night after night after night. We have live stream every single day, starting from March 22nd, 2020, like almost uh, more than two years ago. That's how we start. We see the trend. That's how we are trying to move forward. And Feastock Media Ministry officially formed on January 2021 when Pastor Rantung asked, okay, we see the importance of media. We see how the trend is going. This is how we share our gospel, through the media. Now, I understand that when changes happen, a lot of things can, you know, be discussed. Uh, and uh, we see how, like, from Paul to Martin Luther, Ellen G. White, the, the ways of evangelism throughout uh, the centuries have changed. But the 21st century, this is the way of evangelism, to digital evangelism. Now, uh, I know there's some concern that, you know, it doesn't feel organic. Like, you know, you see lamp here, lamp there, cameras, cameras, cameras. And I know, even my own wife said, you know, how come you guys always do a live stream? Can't just one day we just shut off all the cameras just for us so it can be feel more organic. So we can feel organic here in this church like it was back then. But unfortunately, you know, that's the, the trend that we move forward. As I share the next slide, I know some of you guys have seen the slides in regards of his ministry report. Uh, if you've seen it before, you know, you, you know what, what I was about to share, but this is one of the ways that we're doing ministry moving forward. Uh, we had uh, Elder Honey, he gave, he gave his testimony that, you know, I think sometimes he, he put it in this way, like, it's kind of you know, pointless that we're doing this. But when he sees the numbers, he's like, wow, this is a way to move forward. And this is what I want to plead to the church, that... We can move forward. We want everyone to get involved on our digital evangelism. 21 alone. How many do you, is about 1.251,693 1, people has been reached through our Feastock Media Ministry. One, imagine that. 1,251,693 people have been reached through all our videos, all our live stream. That's a lot of numbers for a church that is less than 100 people. Have you ima can you imagine for us to, be, to reach this many people in a year? Uh, how it was back then, like how Paul was, he had to travel 50 days here, 100. It's so difficult. And to reach the, I'm sure the numbers, it's probably in thousands, it's not in millions. You see, we, found, we managed to gain 2,000 followers throughout 2021 alone. 467 and 600 engagement, people commenting, sharing, liking uh, the videos. So this is one uh, an impact that digital evangelism can do. This is the way of doing evangelism in 21st century. I mean... I've been in Feastock for the last 10 years. Uh, I mean, I'm just looking back for the last 10 years. You know, I was personal ministry leaders when we're doing KKR. We're doing uh, evangelism events. Uh, just by the numbers alone. Just by the numbers alone. The things that we do the last 10 years can be accomplished in one week. You see the difference of ways of how we're doing evangelism and reaching people out there. Uh, that is, that's a big amount of number. You guys don't believe me? Look at this. 
I look at the chart, I look at the data. There's about 45 people, I mean, 40, I'm sorry, 45 countries are watching our live stream, our videos. You see, Indonesia, obviously, United States, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Netherlands, Brazil, Australia, Ethiopia, Singapore, India. There's seven, there's seven followers from India. You know how many in Myanmar? There's 35 followers from Myanmar. Myanmar, three in Pakistan, three in Saudi, two in Somalia, five in Turkey, I mean, two in Turkey, five in Thailand. I don't know how they get to get across our channels, but that's how God works. How can we reach these, these, these amount of people in different countries? You know, it'll be difficult. We have to fly there, we have to do this, but look at this. Through the, the videos and the live stream, through digital evangelism, we were able to reach all these people. I, do, I, I don't know how they found the channel, but I'm sure that's the way God works. He just found it. There's 45 different countries, and the ones that I mentioned are from non-Christian countries. So, Pakistan, you know, Saudi Arabia, those are Muslim countries. India, is Hindus. So, non-Christian denomination countries that I'm, I'm just, you know, trying to emphasize on. Look at this. The total hours video view in 2021 alone, 2021 alone, it's about 43,300. So that's equal to, like, let's say one person, you're trying to watch our content, like the amount of people that watch our content, it'll take you five years to actually watch our content. That's the amount of, that's how long people are watching our uh, videos and our live stream. This is the way of digital evangelism. The amount of people, you know, for us, I mean, some of you guys probably here trying to watch me preach in like 20 minutes, you fall, fall asleep, you know. But here, look, this many people are spending their time watching. 43,000. Uh, I just put that because it was 2.6 million, million minutes. Next. See, 33% of our videos come from live stream. You know, uh, I'm, once again, I'm repeating this because we already said 67% are from regular videos. So we do a lot of live stream. That's one of the reasons why. People enjoy live stream because guess what? Live stream makes you feel that you're there. You know, those who are watching right now, there are people who are watching here, uh, our live stream right now, and they're not here. You know, some of you guys are here, but they can be in different states. They can be in different countries. They're watching this through the live stream. That is the power of digital evangelism. Here, 78%, uh, 80% post a video. Uh, viewers are from video that we posted. But there are also 22% of people are watching video because you shared a video on Facebook. You shared a video on YouTube. People are watching that. So when you're sharing something, it is important because people are watching it. You know, 67% are followers, but there are 33% that are non-followers. So people, you know, that is not following our, our page are watching because you shared it. They might not be a Seventh-day Adventist. So that is the importance of sharing the, uh, the broadcast, I mean the live stream and in the videos. There are still people out there that are seeking these videos, that are seeking the truth. So... We all know this. I will go. So this is the ways how we do move forward when it comes to evangelism, digital evangelism. You know, you see a church with less than 100 people will be a 2 million people out there. As a church, I would like this, this to grow. We're not satisfied with 1.2. We want to be at 2 million next year. You know, uh, 3 million the year after. 4 million. Uh, that's how the gospel being, being spread throughout the world. This is the new evangelism. Just by one click, you know, publish. Publishing the videos. People are watching. People are learning about the truth. People are learning about the word of God. Now, you see... I will go. You think it's just a slogan. Oh, I will go. 
but I Will Go is actually a project that was uh, developed by General Conference. So in here, it's basically stating the mission of sharing the gospel to the whole world. But what they do is, I'm, I don't know, I think next time I'll move my slide a little bigger. But in there it says that, so they're trying to understand the key point indicator, then re, they reevaluate how their gospel are being shared and how effective if the gospel is being shared. You see in here it says, that, so every five years they want to look how effective is the gospel. It's not just a slogan, and they reevaluate how to do this. And I know for sure one of the things that they will, ev they will evaluate is digital evangelism. Because that is one way to be able to reach so many out there. So within in 2025, they will set a new ob objective. So, you know, that's one of the tools that we could use, digital evangelism. Now, this is, this is my plea to stop. You see in Proverbs 16, verse 3, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. 37, 38 says, then he said to the side, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out his work into his harvest. As we are growing Fisdak Media Ministry, we are in need of help. This is why one of the things that, you know, I wanted to be here and share the news because I'm pleading to the church that we want everyone in this church to get involved in this evangelism. We need more hosts. We have so many programs that we plan, but we don't want to use, keep using the same persons all the time. We need more volunteers to help with our productions. You know, setups, uh, on uh, helping out things here and there. There are a lot of things that needs help. We need more video editors. Uh, I will share this slide next, but that's one thing that we greatly need. We have so many projects that we plan, so many things that we want to do, we don't have that many workers. You know, we're, we're capped out. There are many, you know, are sacrificing their time, but it'll be efficient if us as a gr church join together hand in hand full with our this digital evangelism by creating videos for others that want to see you know there are many others that seek the truth you know we need more members of team doa there are many of our viewers out there asking for prayers you know if you want involved we can help you know so you can pray for them as well that way we have more members of team doa you know prayer group and also for the youth, especially, we need more English-speaking program. Now, because we, uh, ultimately we live in the United States, some of the, the messages and the videos that we need to share needs to be in English. Right now, we're tapping into our Indonesian audience, but I uh, hope and pray one day the youth can have their own programs. You know, where we can have FISDIA channel specifically for English. You know, and like I said, as you see the numbers, 1.2 million out there that we have reached. And I want to get to 2 million. I want to get to 3 million. I want to how we share the gospel. You know, and I'm pleading with everyone, you know, if you want, is this is an open invitation. Anyone that wants to work, feel free to contact. You know, there's a system that we built that way. If you want to help us, we'll be able to get you in. It's not that just specific people wants to work. No, everyone. We want, we're calling everybody to get involved for Feast Up. Anyone or those who are watching, anybody have ideas, please send it to us. Because all of us here are committed. We want to share the Gospels. Because we see through the numbers that this is the way how we share the Gospels to many people out there. See, in 2021, look at this. You know what's the top videos that people like to watch in our channel? It's called Nubuatan Air Akhir Jaman. End times. You know, eschatologies. Daniel. Uh, prophecy. Seri Perkabaran Daniel. Sabbat. Bible fact. Maritanya Doctor. Daily worship. Those are the things that make Adventists different than others. Our end times prophecies. Daniel's Sabbath. Uh, the health message, Sabbath school, daily worship. 
You see that? Many other pe people are seeking the truth. These are the mo our most popular videos that we had. And I want to share this as well. You know, last year in 2021 alone, we posted 1,200 videos. 1,200 videos. You know, for us to be able to get there, that is a big number. It took a lot of sacrifice. If you look at one video, it can vary from 30 minutes to 60 minutes by you know, recording, transferring it to a computer, edit, and publish it. It takes about 30, to 60, uh, 30 minutes to one hour, and we have made 1,200 videos. Those who are involved at the time, you know, I want to know. Revelation 22, verse 12 says, And I behold, I come with me to give every man according to his work. I want to actually give thanks to the team for you to be able to make this many videos. It took a lot of sacrifice. It took a lot of late night. It took a lot of time that you could have been doing something else. And I appreciate that. Those are because, and they are doing this because they know the importance of digital evangelism. They know the reach that we can get. It's not trying to get a personal glory, but they know that, you know, this is one of the things that, a uh, question that pastor asked during our end-year program. Program it says, why are we doing this? Why are we doing Fish of Media Ministry? And they said, when he was small, as he was small, he knows that he, you know, for the gospel to be spread throughout the world, then Jesus will come. All of us here understand that, and all of us here are committed to it. That's why they're willing to make sacrifices to be able to make it happen. I have to say, it's not easy. It is not easy to make 1,000 200 videos in one year. That is a large amount of videos. And it took a lot of time and effort and sacrifice to make it. But, you see, we're sowing a lot of seeds. I, I try to make, uh, I screenshot comments of people who are thankful for our message, thankful for our videos. There are thousands of these similar comments out there because they appreciate that we share to them. They appreciate the truth that they have learned in here. So they appreciate uh, the encouragement and the prayers that was given to them when they're weak in faith, when they're lost, when they are uh, needing someone to talk to. These are all the fruits of your labors. If you sacrifice making 1,200 videos in a year, this is what it is. We're not doing this for ourselves. We're not doing this, but we're doing this for God. We're working for God. Because we understand the numbers. We understand the reach. This is how we're able to reach many millions out there. It'll be, as I mentioned, 10 years equal one week. 10 years of effort that we're done. We could have done it in one week. You know, all our members from Feastock Media, they understand this. Which is why they're working hard. They're making sacrifices. And this is one of the things that I would plead to the church. Let's go 100%. Let's go help us to this digital evangelism that we're doing. Because by you taking a small part, you're basically doing your job to evangelism. You know, I want to share a personal testimony for myself. You know, I was not born an Adventist. Uh, one of the ways that I was, I, I know a lot, I may, you know, one of my, my best friends are Adventists. But I never really, uh, like, go dig deeper. So when I chose to, okay, you know what, let me learn more about Adventists. Guess what? One of my friends told me, hey, go open up Amazing Facts and then just read some uh, Bible studies in there. That's what I did. That's why I was able to learn deeper about Seventh-day Adventists. You know, and eventually find my mentor doing Bible study and eventually be baptized. This is the same way. You see, this avenue back then, this was back in 2007. So there has been about 14 years advancement in that. Do you, do you think, you know, right now, just an example, right? Like when you're reading an instruction, which one is easier for you? Reading an instruction and do it, or just watching videos of someone telling you what to do and then do it. Which one do you have more for? Just watching, right? Yeah, exactly. 
Watching is easier. Right now, that's what we're doing. If my, myself from back then were able to find our videos, it would be much easier for me to connect, much, be, much faster for me to, you know, because it's much easier for us to watch and understand than read and comprehend ourselves. That is the same way. The tools are there. And I, I heard this as well, that I, I don't want to share the, uh, the name or the families, but you know, there are some viewers that are watching our videos, uh, have been joining night, nightly on a nightly basis, that they chose to learn the truth and wants to be baptized. Praise the Lord. That is the, the, that is the mission that we want to do. You know, by having, sharing this digital uh, evangelism, sharing our videos, this is the ultimate goals that we want to do. We want to sow the seeds, people know the truth, and eventually want to be baptized. Then we'll be able to connect them into a local church where they can grow. That is the power of digital evangelism. And it's in the palm of our hand right now as a church. We have a platform that has been built in the 21st centuries. And, you know, the vision that Pastor Anton was set as well, that what he wants is for the youth to carry on the torch, to be able to have program for himself. That is the, his vision that he wanted as we move forward. We want to have more English-speaking programs. You know, we want to have things. Cause I know you guys, are, you guys are creative. You guys are the next generation. You, you guys are the next to carry the torch. You have so much creative minds compared to all of us. If I ask my, my, my son, what's his favorite uh, videos about Seventh-day Adventists? Is this, Ellen versus the World. This is one of the videos that he enjoys watching. This is the type of content that I want to create. This is my dream. For to be able to have this, a videos where my kids would understand. Content that my kids enjoy. So I, this is one of the things that maybe... Uh, now, it's not only as a church, but as, as a Seventh-day Adventist church in general. You see the evangelism of the, all the other churches. I've seen their followers. They have, because they have created, they may have some contents that are relevant, uh, that can be, can be applied to our daily life. And we want to take the steps that way. Because trying to YouTube Seventh-day Adventists, guess what happened? You see videos that are rebuking Seventh-day Adventists. Like, why they're wrong? Why this wrong? And what we want to create, we want to create more seven day events content so when people uh, search it, they know what it's all about. You know, because we're different. We have a mission to be called. So that's, that's what it is that we want trying to do with digital evangelism. We want to create all this content. That's our mission as our church as well. That's what we want to create. We've seen the numbers, we've seen the reach. This is why we kind of keep moving forward. Now, to close this, I'm not trying to say that digital evangelism will replace in person. That is not the same way. That's not what I'm trying to apply. You know, we need the fellowship. We need the in-person. You know, it's like digital evangelism, I would say, in a way of, uh, it goes hand in hand with in person. That's why, let's say, if somebody felt they want to learn more or they want to be baptized, we will connect to, to a local church because they need the interactions and the fellowship in the same way. Like digital uh, evangelism doesn't replace in person. It's more like a long distance relationship. You see, let's say you meet somebody online. You get to know that person online. You don't meet each other. you exchanging back and forth. you exchanging back and forth. This relationship that you have. But eventually, you, when you will, you will have to meet this so as you see the numbers in billions out there that we reach that's how we're trying to do we're trying to reach as many people out there through our digital evangelism and where they learn the truth and chose to be baptized we want them to connect to a local church so lastly you know i want to thank feast up and these are the top fans that are out there the viewers our supporters our donors, uh, you guys out there that's currently watching right now, uh, we appreciate you. Uh, 
you could have been watching so many things. As you see the statistic, you could have been watching Netflix, you could have been watching YouTube, you could have been watching any other things, but you, seek, you chose to seek the Lord. You watch videos about God and want to have a relationship with God. And we ask that you continue to support us in the future because all of us here, all of us are committed you know, to bring more content about God so you can get closer to God. So please uh, continue your support. If you're sharing, liking, commenting, we really appreciate that. That's how we share the gospel. As you see, there are many out there. There's non-followers that know it. There's literally millions and thousands of people out there that needs to be reached. As we continue on with this, you see, every second, every step, our people are getting to know more about God. Not only uh, Christian, uh, different denominations, non, non-Christians are learning more through social media. I don't know how God, that's how God works. Some people will stumble upon it. But for us here, we are committed to continue to do this so you'll be able to receive more videos and more contents in regard, that can bring you closer to God. With that, church, let us work together. God has given us this tool. Martin Luther says one of the greatest things. Ellen G. White said the same way through the printing press. And we have the television, but now we're the 21st centuries. We have the new ways of doing evangelism. We have learned the data. So we want everyone to get involved so we can finish the work in this world. I bring out in Jesus' name. Amen.